the biggest reason for infertility among the couples that you see? Is it age? Well, it really varies now. So there are uh, plenty of people who just have a severe infertility problem. So a woman is hardly producing eggs, a man is hardly producing sperm. Doesn't matter what age they are, that's going to be a big problem. There are uh, women who uh, are coming with a man who does have a, a what we call a subfertile problem. So he doesn't think he's got a problem because he's got a, a sperm count that seems to be okay. But actually, it wasn't until you put the sperm and eggs together in a ditch that you find out the sperm does have a problem. But they haven't done that uh, IVF route for several years of investigations first. And so now it's the woman's age is the problem. And so her eggs are what we call chromosomally compromised. The DNA, the, 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 the genetic information there is, is compromised. We see a, a really whole range. And it depends whether they're coming later or they're coming earlier. If they're coming earlier, that's generally because there is, there is a real fertility issue that we can identify. Sometimes I call it an inefficiency issue. So you have a little bit of uh, maybe a problem with the woman. She, she might not be ovulating regularly, but she doesn't realize that because she's having period regularly. And when she's ovulating, she actually isn't releasing a quality egg to be fertilized. But at the same time, a man has a slightly lower sperm count. Combined, if you think you've only got 12 ovulations in a year, if only half of them are quality, but they're being compromised because of the man's sperm, and then it may well be that, well, they're not together for every ovulation because they're busy and they're working. It's an efficiency issue rather than a pure infertility issue. So there's all that one has to bear in mind. And that's why sometimes you find women can't, can't conceive with their partner. They go through IVF, they have a baby, and bingo, straight away, they have another baby naturally. Is infertility rising? And, and if it is, do you have any theories as to why? It is on the increase, I, 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 and for different reasons. So yes, there's the women having babies later issue, and that's why secondary infertility is on the increase, and not, much pe not many people talk about that. So I extended the charity that I established many decades ago called the Rachel Foundation to now actually include secondary infertility as well, because that also needs to be recognized. Um, infertility is different in different parts of the world um, because you have different environmental circumstances. But I, I think lifestyle, and for me, my hobby horse, is I think the toxicity and pollution in our world is increasing infertility. That is, for me, a very big problem. We need to get to grips with our polluted, toxic world. And I don't know how we do that, but that is causing um, fertility issues, both in men and in women. There is certainly a decrease in sperm count in men, certainly in advanced countries. Um, in most countries where men have been tested, increasing other testicular problems too. So it's not just about women, it's certainly about, about men as well. Um, and the later we, both men and women leave um, the opportunity to try to have children, which is not their fault, it's society's issue as well, then it, it is going to com complicate any inefficiency there with, with the age. So there are many reasons why infertility is on the increase. On the toxicity note, do you just mean pollution or do you mean the kind of chemical products we put on our skin every day? Are they all under that umbrella? Yes, plus the air particles. You know, the the uh, particles that we breathe in from our polluted atmosphere be it from, well, my real pet hobby horse is diesel fumes. You know, big cities with polluting taxis and, 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 other, and other cars. And, and when you're in environments that are pretty closed, um, where they're releasing diesel fumes, you're getting a big, bigger dose of it. And then there are people who may smoke on top of that, which are taking in hundreds, if not thousands of toxins every time they smoke. Um, so... And actually, and that one, I'm not sure in terms of fertility effects, but there's absolutely no doubt these, these micro and nanoplastic particles that we're all taking on board via lots of routes is potentially going to cause a problem, probably more to our general health than our fertility. But again, if it's affecting our tissues, which exquisitely affect our hormones, which then affect the production of sperm, the production of eggs, etc., it could all be interlinked. So I think... It, um, the food we take on board. Uh, if you now look at 
farmers' fields where they have to leave an area next to where the crop is growing for uh, wildlife activity, you see the amount of growth there is phenomenal. And yet you look where the crops are, there's nothing at all except the crops. What's keeping that down? It's, it, it's all these things we really need to consider. Uh, not enough is done, I think, to, to look at how polluted our individual bodies are. 